This is Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com. I'm going to show you really quickly how in Adobe CC you can stabilize, track, and then put in 3D geometry from Cinema 4D Lite. These are brand new features and really simplify 3D workflow. So inside of After Effects, the first thing I'm going to do is import the footage that we want to use. So here I've just called it footage, and it's footage of the patio outside of my building. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it onto a new composition that will create a composition of the same frame rate and frame size and duration as that original clip. Now when I pan through here, I want to find the segment that I've made specifically for this. And then I'm going to hit B to set my work area. And then I'm going to move ahead for this example, hit N to set the end of the work area. And then I'm going to trim the composition to the work area because we're going to be using a lot of automated processes, we don't want to be having the software rendering and analyzing unneeded frames. So you want to trim it off to the size you need. Now you'll notice here it thinks frame 0 is frame 356. So I'm just going to go in here, change the composition settings. And one of the things I want to change is changing it from the start frame to being start frame zero, and it's still 91 frames of duration. And then instead of uh, 23, I want to have that to be an even 24. And we're going to find out why when we move into Cinema 4D, but it's just because for now we're using this because it's a round number. You could keep it at 23.976 if you want, but then we're going to be doing a lot of copying and pasting. So I'm just going to move it to 24 because it's not that noticeable difference, and hit OK. So now this is set up to be smoothed out. Even though I've done as good a job as I could out in the field, shooting on an SLR camera using handheld motion is going to have a lot of shaky, jerky parts. So we're going to use the Warp Stabilizer VFX, which is new to Adobe CC. Uh, the Warp Stabilizer was around in CS6, but this is an updated version. So we're going to drag that out, and it's already going to start analyzing. While it's doing that, I'm just going to briefly describe what we're looking at. So we're going to have the result here, which can either be smooth motion or no motion, which will lock it off. Uh, you can change the smoothness, and I think 50% is too much. I'm just going to have 5% smoothness, meaning it's going to be 5% smoother than it was before. The method can be only position, position scale rotation, perspective, or the subspace warp. And the subspace warp changes things inside. So these are all linear, so this is just the position. This is position scale and rotation. And perspective starts to pinch and widen the top and bottom. But subspace warp, it creates a much smoother look, but it's not always the look you want. Sometimes subspace warp makes a lot of mistakes. If you find it's making a lot of mistakes, you just move up until you get something that looks good. Uh, borders here, basically because it has to expand this a little bit, what it's going to be doing is if we move to stabilize only, you can see there's going to be a little bit of black bar because it is having to move the comp around. So if you do stabilize and crop, then it is cropping it down to be the aspect ratio and then stabilize crop and auto scale is going to fit it to there and then if you use synthesize edges it's going to make up information to fill in those regions but that's only for times when you really cannot withstand scaling for us auto scale puts it at 104.3 percent and uh, that is within tolerable bounds for me basically 110 and higher is too much uh, 110 and lower is just fine, so that's kind of your break-even point. And then there are a lot of additional things you can do here in the advanced, such as working out the reduction of the rolling shutter, which happens on SLR cameras. Uh, you can change its objective kind of thing here, and uh, all sorts of advanced things, but for most of your work, you'll never have to touch those. You can just bring it on, say how smooth, and then define everything outside of the advance. So while I've been talking, it's been stabilizing and it's done a pretty good job of smoothing things out. So now what we're going to do is go back to our project here and change the title of this from being footage to stabilized because this is the stabilized footage. We're going to take that and drag it onto a new comp and that comp we will be calling camera solve. 
The reason that we break these things up into multiple comps is because you can't effectively apply a stabilization and a 3D track to the same comp because it has to read the pixels off one to make the other and stacking them is just not an effective way to do that. So it's best to pre-comp it so all of the pixel changes it's making here to stabilized we can then make use of here in the tracking. So we pull up the 3D camera tracker and pull that on to the stabilized within the camera solve and already it's going to start working. So there are a lot of things you want to tell it to make this easier and the first is is this a fixed angle of view or is it a variable zoom? I used a prime lens so it's a fixed angle and within the advanced you can tell it things like what type of movement are you doing so if it's stuck on a tripod and you're moving it around you should tell it that so it doesn't assume otherwise I'm gonna say typical because this is handheld moving around nothing's really set so sometimes this will fail and when it does fail you want to hit reset and just have it give another go so it's not that onerous for it to try again and sometimes it makes mistakes when you start changing settings before it's uh, done so what are some other things in here we've got uh, method used once it sorts itself out and then it'll tell you the average error and that is how far off or how confident it is that it's got this thing locked down and then by tweaking all of your settings you're going to improve its average error so basically you want the average error to be as close to zero as possible but there are areas of tolerance that you can put up with just because nothing's really perfect so now it's going to try to solve the camera and it's put all of these little dots everywhere and you can see when you mouse over it starts to make a target and we know this is a good track because when we put the target out there it seems to align with the ground so when you scrub through you can see that the points are very much stuck to things in the scene and we're looking at an average error of 0.23 pixels which is pretty good that's going to be almost indistinguishable ideally you want this to be as low as close to zero as possible so that's really just the big thing now we're going to add a cinema 4d object to this scene so what we're going to do next is we're going to go layer new maxon cinema 4d file and this is again new in adobe cc but this is how easy it is to just add in a Cinema 4D project. You can import Cinema 4D projects as well if you'd like, but we're just going to create a new one from scratch. I'm just going to call this Titles, and then it's going to open up Cinema 4D Lite right out of the application. So in here, you can make some basic things, and I would encourage you to learn from other tutorials how to make things in Cinema 4D Lite, but I'm just going to show you really quick how to make text. So you go to Spline, pull up some text, and then you type into its properties over here something like premiumbeat.com click outside and you've created these splines and you're going to create an extrude nerves put the text here inside the extrude nerves like this and then it creates this extrusion now you'll save your work here and then when you go back into after effects it's stuck it in here so we're back in after effects and the bulk of this tutorial is about after effects so the first thing you want to do is make sure that this sticks into your scene and in order to do that you need to have a camera and we make the camera by hitting create camera off the 3d tracker so it creates a camera that matches the camera we already made but one thing I'll show you real quick is when I hit create camera and then we go into the cinema 4d here and we say use the comps camera it doesn't look correct at all it's kinda of like our our 3D thing is floating off over here where it shouldn't be. And that's because we have not defined where the origin of this scene is. And the origin is, if we go back into Cinema 4D here, this point here where new objects are created, it's 0, 0, 0 on the Cartesian plane. It is at the ground at point 0, and that's where things come in. So right now, that's where this is, and that's where it expects to be but we haven't defined in this scene where that is so delete that camera because it was wrong go back to your 3d camera tracker and then we're going to select a bunch of points and then we're going to right click and we're going to say set ground plane and origin 
So it's going to say use these points to say where the ground is and from that we're going to then put a point on there that is the origin. So we say define that. Good, that's done. Now create a camera. Perfect. And now premiumbeat.com is stuck down there on the ground. So that works out pretty well. And it's actually done a good job of sticking it in there. So it's pretty firmly where it ought to be. There are a few things that you'll want to do just to improve how this looks. And one of those is going to be to go into your titles here, go to the project, the thing you've created, and make sure that its frame rate matches the frame rate of your composition. So go to interpret footage main, and you're going to want to conform its frame rate to, we said 24, and then hit return. So now this 24 frames a second comp is matching the number of frames here. And if we go into Cinema 4D again, or Cinema 4D Lite, you can see that it's 0 to 90 frames by default. But if you go Edit Project Settings, you can see it thinks it's 30 frames a second. So change that to be 24. And then we'll just change its frames to be 91, just like the comp. Hit Save. And we go back here. And everything is now lining up. So if you animate something, you can count out the frames in the Cinema 4D file. And then if you change some things in this project, it'll line up for that number of frames. So that's basically it for the basics of putting Cinema 4D things into After Effects using the new, the new Adobe CC tools. Uh, we've stabilized footage, we've solved for the camera, and then we've brought in the Cinema 4D file. If you want to get deeper into Cinema 4D though, I would totally recommend that you check out other tips and tutorials on premiumbeat.com. Uh, it's a great resource for all sorts of applications, Cinema 4D included. Uh, this is really just the basic overview about how to get things into Adobe After Effects and to work with them in there. The big thing though, I'm going to just stress this again, is make sure your frame rates and durations match and also make sure that you're using the correct cameras and that you've set the origin and told the computer where the things are. A lot of frustration in 3D integration comes from not setting the origin because the computer can't know until you tell it. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful with getting you started into the Adobe CC and some of the new tools. If you want to learn more about Adobe After Effects and other applications, stop by premiumbeat.com and check out the blog for those. And of course, come to Premium Beat for all of your royalty-free music and sound effects needs. I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.